The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm Joey Sysek. Across from me is Malik Hill. And uh, we took a week off once again, but um, no big deal. We're back. And uh, there's a lot going on, a lot of crazy stuff. Um, And normally we stick to football and basketball primarily because those are the sports that we know the best. But it has come to the point of we can't ignore it anymore. The Tigers are in prime position to make the wild card playoff spot out of nowhere. Now I've, yeah. we've been kind of keeping an eye on it, of course, but just until basically yesterday, it wasn't really real. They passed up the twins. It, it was, it was getting exciting Yeah, in the past two weeks because yeah. they just kept winning. They took two out of three against the Baltimore Ori- Orioles, which are a really good team in the yeah. AL East. Um, and that flip flopped them ahead of the Minnesota twins. Hmm? It's like you turn it down a on your head, just, yeah, just a little loud. <laughs> Keep talking. Just you talk about the Tigers, and I'll try to fix it for you. So, I was it was it in the middle of July? They were like, they were in the middle of the pack, basically in the league. Mm-hmm. There, yeah, there was no chance of playoffs at all. Really, a lot of Tigers fans had given up on the season, honestly. And I went to a game where they played the Yankees. Uh, I think that was three three weeks ago. Second, Maybe a month you? at this point. Yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah. That was okay. So the, the headphones got swept but, around again. <laughs> okay. Jeez. All right. But yeah, the game I I watched, they got pretty much like blown out. Yeah. And the lineup was like minor league, basically. So mm-hmm. it was just wasn't impressive. And then they won that series, and it seems like ever since they won that series against the Yankees, they've just been on fire. Mm-hmm. And there are magical teams in baseball. Maybe not every season there's like high like serious magical teams, yeah. but it it happens in in baseball and a, hey, it seems like the Tigers just got the luck of the draw this time, right? And yeah, every, all the young guys are improving. They have the best pitcher in baseball at this point. It seems he's gonna win the Cy Young. Yep, Tark Skubal, and I they they've just, I they found something. Yeah, I don't I mean, know. Here's, they found something. Here's the actual number. The Tigers are 20, 28 and 11 since August 11th. Uh, so that's, you know, almost a two month span at this point, month and a half. Um, that's the best record in baseball in that yeah. span. And they've gone from eight games under 500 to now nine games above at 83 and 74. Uh, they now, like I said, they have a game and a half lead over the Twins. I think it's the Twins and the Royals at this point. Both are tied right behind them, and they have five games left. They control their own destiny. The best part about it, their last series of the year is against the, the absolute White worst Sox. White Sox we've ever seen. Yeah, it, this this is something like from a TV show or a movie, and I think only a few teams have pulled off what they're pulling off right now in baseball yeah. history. Mm-hmm. Like coming back from the point of the season they were at, yeah, getting into the playoffs. According to some analytics – the Tigers have gone from a 0.2% chance of making the playoffs to now owning their own destiny. Incredible. Imagine if we would have put money on that. That's the kind of stuff that, you know, you're not going to do. Yeah. But just a random swing. Like, who cares? Why yeah, not? Go for it. Which is just, it's crazy. Um, And it's it's mostly like we said, it's like their their pitching is so good. Yeah. Their bats have heated up a little bit. Um, Spencer Torkelson still kind of iffy here and there, yeah, but at every now, every other game, he has a hit or two. Yeah. Um, yeah. I believe Colt Keith has been having a really good season. Yeah. Again, I haven't watched very much <laughs> Tigers baseball at all. I just kind of look, um, at the stats, look at some, um, post game scores and things like that, but nothing, nothing crazy. 
Yeah, Riley Green and Matt Veerling were like their most consistent bats for most of the season, but yeah. other guys have been stepping up. Yeah, they have the best ERA in baseball in the last month or so. Um, their relief pitchers, like we said, are also right up there with um, ERA and things like that. Um, and this is after a lot of people thought that they, they traded away Jack Flaherty before the, the deadline, and a lot of people were hopeful that he would be something, and he still might, um, but they were trying to dump off some guys, and it's worked out, and they're still playing really good um, despite not really having any big bats in the lineup. Like we said, like Riley Green is their best hitter, and he's hitting 262. Yeah. 24 home runs and 72 RBI. On a really good team, he's in the middle of the lineup, most likely. Yeah. He's not like a lead batter. Right. He's still a good player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's he's leading our team in almost everything statistically. Colt Keith is the kind of the next closest guy. He's got 59 RBIs. But we only have uh, five guys with 10-plus homers on the year. And our best batting average is uh, Kerry Carpenter, who has uh, – a 287 and he's not he's not an everyday player or anything like that so it's just crazy um the way that they've they've done it because it's it's not just offensively they've just been kind of like old school baseball of just you know picking their spots and getting aggressive at certain times and they're just beating people and it's it's cool it's fun to watch means uh, that if they do end up making it, that I'm probably going to have to watch some playoff baseball, I guess. Yeah. I I think this means a lot for the city of Detroit mm-hmm. because when was the last time the city of Detroit, well, they, the, the Lions had a magical run last year, but yeah. before I'd say last year, how many other teams have had a run like this in the city yeah, of Detroit? Yeah, nothing like this. This like, is crazy. Yeah, like the, the Pistons had their run of dominance in the East. Mm-hmm. The Red Wings were dominant in the West in their era. Yeah. This is almost like yeah. what this is like what the Lions could have done in 2022. Yeah, had what was it the the Rams not lost or whatever that was. Mm-hmm. Um, Baker Mayfield ended up beating. Yes, I can't remember who it was, but yeah, yeah. Or he lo- he lost to the Seahawks. Yes, yeah, I believe. Like yeah, he lost to the Seahawks in the last game. Yeah. Either way, that would have been the ne- the closest thing that I can think of, at least in our lifetime. Um. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, the Tigers, they have two left against the Tampa Bay Rays. And then, like I said, they have the final three games against the White Sox and they just got to hold on. And I saw like, even if they go 0 in five, like if they lost every single game, the twins would still have to go two and three. Yeah. Uh, it seems like the twins are them. just out of, so yeah, out of, out of gas at this point. So as long as the Tigers, you know, win three of the, the five, I think it's pretty Pretty locked in. Um, so, crazy. Crazy times. And I can't believe to think that we're probably going to watch some playoff baseball. Yeah. And if if they win, I'm going to be confident when they clinch it. Yeah. I plan on getting some tickets with my friend Alex, who's a super uh, Tigers fan. He's there been you know. a Tigers super fan for a long time. I want to see some playoff. Some some playoffs in Detroit. Yeah. I want to be there for it. So, yeah. yeah I'll plan on going to at least one game. Right. Um, and I think it's another one of those scenarios, too, similar how the Pistons are now, where the Tigers get, like, no primetime games. I think they had, like, two, maybe. Hmm. Um, and that's just because of Tarek Skubal at this point. So to be able to see them on the big stage will be interesting, again, because they're not they're not a flashy team. Like, even though they're winning, they're, they're still not. I, I feel like people are going to have a hard time believing that they're going to win. It's just going to be off momentum at this point, which is cool. It's, it's fun to see. And, um, I'll be really curious to see, um, how Tigers fans come out. If we get to get a home game, cause we get automatically one home game in the wild. I don't remember how the wild card works these days. Um, is it a three game series? Is it just a one play in game? I think it's three game. Yeah. I'd, I'd have I, to look. I can't <laughs> fully remember. That's how, that's how bad I feel about baseball is like, I just don't watch it to know. Listen, I'm in the same boat, so I can't judge you at all. Days. I'm in the exact same boat. Last time I saw it was three games, but I'm not sure if they changed it. Yeah. I'm trying to look it up really quick just so I don't, I don't know. I don't want to get this wrong or anything, but, and I also don't, do you know, have any idea who they would be playing? 
by chance? Uh, do not. Okay. Do not know yet. Hmm. I'm not really sure. Oh, well. Dang. If the Tigers have a home game in the playoffs, I'll try my hardest to get there. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully the tickets don't sell out too fast. Yeah, it is a series. Okay. okay. So I found it's a series. I'm assuming that it's going to be three games. Um, right now, it's projected to be the Astros versus the Tigers. Oh, okay. Um, that would be interesting. It really would. Especially if uh, Justin Verlander healthy. See, these are just all these things that I do not know. <laughs> it looks like it. It looks like Justin Verlander's healthy, so to potentially be. I don't know. See, I don't even know their lineups. Like, there is a chance that we could have Justin Verlander pitch at Detroit. Listen, <laughs> for a wild card series, I, I, I'd have to be there because I don't think That's he's there. I don't think he's their number one at the moment. I can't remember. I feel like for some reason they have Blake Snell, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um. So anyway, sorry for our lack of baseball knowledge, but it it is exciting, um, to see this, um, and yeah. The one other thing that I want to mention about baseball, um, Shohei Otani might be the, the greatest player of all time. He is. And we talked about this outside. I, of I, I don't want to, I don't want to, a lot of people are agreeing on it, but mm. let's, let's, let's end the debate. His, his career is still just too young. That's the only thing that like takes me out of it. But the, the fact that we've never seen something like this yeah, and he's, he's that age. Is he, isn't he just like 30, 31? Yeah. He's fairly, he, he's Yeah. Well, he's, he's, he's still in there. his prime. He's not pitching. He yeah. could pitch again, which makes it even crazier. They were talking that he could about go back to pitching. He might pitch next year. Listen, yeah, he's thirty years old. When he pitched, he was one of the best pitchers in the league. Mm -hmm. When he's just sticking to batting, he's one of the best batters in the league. Yeah, he's a DH he, and he hit fifty home runs and fifty, and 50 stolen, stolen bases. bases. And on his final, the game that crossed that threshold, he had three home runs, six and of ten, six, ten three RBIs, home runs, ten RBIs. <laughs> Insane. Yeah. Um, I can't even remember. Actually, I kind of can remember the last time I think I saw somebody hit 10 RBIs or 8 RBIs maybe. The person with the record had six, went 6 of 6 with 4 home runs. Hmm. I can't remember what the player's name. See, I remember I, I, it might have been 8 RBIs. I believe was his name Carlos Lee of the Chicago Cubs. Whoever it was at the time, the, the Chicago Cubs had a star first baseman for a long time. I want to say it was Carlos Lee. Um, he hit like 8 RBIs or maybe even 10, but I remember that day being pretty specific of that was like the last time I can remember it. That's how old of baseball I watched. That was Listen, probably mid 20. My greatest memory of baseball is watching the Red Sox hit four straight home runs. I believe that was 2008. Ew. <laughs> I hated the Red yeah. Sox. Hated the Red Sox. I listened. Big Poppy was my guy. So I, I, I was a Sox fan. I hated like years. Jason Veritek and uh, who was their other guy? Jason Veritek and uh, well, Kurt Schilling no. was the pitcher after Pedro Martinez. No, well, they, I, they both pitched. It was like their weird position. Manny Ramirez. Oh, who, who are you thinking? Was Veritek their catcher? I or their remember. DH? DH. I know David Ortiz was their DH, right? Yeah. Whoever played, it was like their first baseman and their catcher that I, I hated. Listen, I was a Red Sox and Lakers fan at the same time back then, so you would not have liked me much. Get, get him You wouldn't have liked here. me very much. No. Shouts out to Kobe. Shouts out to Big Poppy. Uh, anyway, <laughs> all right. Enough baseball talk. Maybe we'll we'll talk more about it next week when we have the final decision. I think yeah. the games will be over. Um, if not, the Tigers could have it locked up by then, which will be cool. Um, college football had some more big games after those. Luckily, the week that we took off were crappy games. Um, both teams, well, Michigan sort of took care of business. <laughs> They looked rough against Arkansas State, but yeah, they 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 had to make a decision finally because yeah, uh, Davis Warren is not a Big Ten quarterback. No, one touchdown to six interceptions yeah. in three games. They finally sat him for Alex Orgy, who played in the USC game uh, this past weekend, and yeah, Alex State Orgy also threw a touchdown pass near the end of the Arkansas State game. Yeah, and Michigan State, uh, they played Boston College, trying to go four and zero in the rainy weather. And you, they, you want to start with them or should yeah, I? Yeah, we're just going to start with them. Okay. I, I'm already going into it. And they couldn't get it done. Yeah, they were missing some guys. They were missing all of their wide receivers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jerron Glover was hurt. 
Um, Nick, Marsh. Nick Marsh was hurt. Antonio Gates Jr. was hurt. Um, I'm trying to remember the other one that was hurt. But a lot of the guys, because I thought, I knew Nick Marsh and Ron Glover were probably going to sit. I did not know about like Antonio Gates Jr. and things like that. So I thought, okay, maybe it's time for those guys to see what they have, step up. And then I saw that they were out as well. And I'm like, oh my goodness, who do we have left? Yeah, Montori Foster and, what well, is his name AZ Johnson? The, the freshman? I think so. I think you're right. Yeah. And then um, the the tight end who Aiden Childs Jack, goes to Jack a lot. Belling. Yeah. Belling. I was trying to I keep, after doing the baseball talk, I kept thinking Verling, Verling. It's not <laughs> Verling, not Verling. Verling. Um, yeah, Aiden likes to check down to him a lot. And I, I is, get, it, is it an issue now or do you still just let him get it out of his system? I don't like the problem is where do we go from here? Like if you're like people are freaking out about Aiden Childs and we I get it. He throws like ducks out there at times and it just looks awful. But when he connects, it's amazing. Yeah. And there's no like in between. The problem with this like his kind of play style I don't know if you can really. It doesn't fit what they are right now. Yeah, I don't know if we can rein him in necessarily. Like, we, I, me personally, I want the big plays. I want to be able to see them happen more often. I want to be able to get creative. Like, if if Aiden doesn't take those shots to Nick Marsh, I know he wasn't here this last game, but yeah, they don't beat Maryland. that kind of style. Yeah, they don't beat Maryland. They they're not going to beat some of these teams if they don't take shots. That's just not how their offense is built. And it's it's like the opposite of what I was saying, I think, previously about the Lions, and we can talk about it more, but like the Lions went back to not using Jamison Williams in this past game against Arizona, and their offense looked a lot smoother. And it's not that Jamison Williams isn't talented, but the Lions have an offense where they can be methodical and make plays down the field. Michigan State doesn't have that. They're not running the ball super great. They're not bad, but it's inconsistent. Offensive line is still inconsistent. And Aiden Childs has a big arm, so let's let's use it. Let's utilize it. Yes, it's very risky at times. But what's the alternative? Like just boring three and outs or, you know, get one first down and then punt it away. Like I don't think we're going to be able to make any plays if we try to pull back. I think using his legs and using him in the run game is a – a better option than him chucking it like over 30 times a game, especially since this is his first time as a starter, Mm -hmm. even though he's four games in now, but he still needs more experience. Yeah. But with all his like best big play options out, he's stuck to trying to make those big plays. Yeah. And Montori Foster is a solid big 10 receiver, but he's not a big play guy. Yeah. Like he he hit, he hit the young guy Johnson on on one of those deep balls. I was going to say that the, for some reason, the timing between him and Montori Foster is off every game, and they're just never on the same page. Aiden always just overthrows him by or this or, much. or like throws it behind him or something. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. The chemistry is just off there because Montori is doing a pretty good job of getting open. It's just for some reason I don't know if Aiden's just you know too strong. Montori's not quite fast enough. I don't know. Um, but they they're just not on the same page. So that's really killing it. Um, but of course the other problem is just the throwing it into double, triple coverage like that. That's kind of the, the more bothersome part for me, I guess is he's not seeing the field. Correctly. Right. Yeah. So even though like, I don't mind taking shots sometimes, like even double coverage, I can accept from time to time, but there was some where there's no way he could see his receiver and think this is going to work with the way the defense was playing. Um, but that's just me. And that's an outside perspective, but like most MSU fans are agreeing with you. So yeah, yeah, you're not saying anything controversial, right? But I'm just thinking like, I'm okay with it at times, but there are some plays that are so egregious and scratchers yeah, that you're like, come on, man. It just, like I said, I don't, I don't want to try to dial him back too much because you get into that situation where if you try you to get, dial somebody confidence away exactly and again i don't think we have something better yeah to you, go to you you have a decent backup option and a guy that transferred from d2 
but I watched him at North Dakota. I think he's a pretty good quarterback. Yeah. He could probably be solid, but your offense doesn't have a high ceiling. Right. They just have a decent floor with the backup. Mm -hmm. And again, Aiden's still young, so he's got time to develop. And I think like the groundwork is there. It's just the decision making needs to catch up. And again, like sure, I guess we could do more potential like RPO style stuff, which would be nice. Maybe that opens things up. But at the end of the day, RPO is heavily decision based. Yeah. So do we trust him to make those decisions correctly? I don't know. And is the offensive line good enough to pull off RPO plays? I don't know. It, it There are a lot of question marks about this team, and we knew that going in. I think a lot of people were just kind of spoiled by starting 3-0 and and things working out. Um, and now we're in this Boston College game, although they were competitive, they could have it could have been worse. Because there was a lot of dropped interceptions by Boston College. So I don't know. I'm I'm kind of holding steady with the team, I think. I think this was just bound to happen. Um, but I think they have they do have that potential to get into a bowl game still. I think they showed enough at Boston College that if they can clean things up, they they could beat Iowa. And what other game do they Take, they could probably take something towards yeah. the end how, of the season. How they, how they come out on the other side of this brutal stretch mm -hmm. is going to tell what the season is about. Yeah. Because who who's going to give up? Who's going to like still be locked in? Right. And try to go for a bowl game. Yeah, because the gauntlet doesn't stop now. They they got Ohio State this week. Yeah. <laughs> and then It's at home, which might make it kind of worse because, yeah. Is Iowa after that or is that two weeks? I think it's after. Ugh. I always feel bad that I can't. Keep everything straight. Well, remembering schedules is not easy. Ohio State, <laughs> Oregon, not. then Iowa. So, yeah, Iowa's yeah. in three weeks. Ugh. See, it's not easy. It isn't. No. Ohio State, I'll give them a pass. Oregon, I'd like to. Oregon has shown flaws, but yeah. they're still clearly a better football right. team. Right. I'd like to be in it at halftime against Oregon, I think. Um, and then Iowa, I think, is a, a possible, possible game to take. Um, I honestly would say Michigan, if they looked, if they beat Boston college, I would say Michigan was on the table, um, even though it's on the road, but the way that Will Johnson has been playing <laughs> and the way yeah, Aiden's listen, playing, if you, if you test Will Johnson more than twice, yeah, it's over. <laughs> so that's the part that makes me nervous, but we'll see that it actually should be a fun rivalry game, especially if Aiden's taking shots. Um, but we'll see. Again, I'm not I'm not freaking out about Michigan State. This is kind of what I expected. Um, they're even playing a little better than that. And uh just have to figure out how to stop stop the uh the crazy throws without taking away confidence. That's why I said it's a it's a slippery slope. Yeah, it's a tough line to to do. Um so yeah. But Ohio State this week, I'm not expecting anything. Just Look good against a top-notch team. Yeah. Um, show some some life. Show against. that you can move the ball against them. Right. You don't. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. Show some because, competitiveness. Yeah. Um, but I'm not expecting anything. So, the Wolverines <sighs> took it on USC. So let's take it back a week. The Monday after Arkansas State, Michigan fans are screaming <laughs> from anywhere they can scream. It, it's it's time to make the change. Mm -hmm. And Sharon Moore didn't waste any time. Which I'm glad. Yeah. Because I was saying it before Arkansas State. Yeah, I, I was honestly surprised he did it because Jim Harbaugh was always known to keep his decisions close to the chest mm -hmm. and wait, like, keep things to the last minute. Sharon came out, press conference, first thing in the morning Monday, and said, Alex Orgy is our guy now. Uh, at least against USC. Yeah. And... They got some fans excited that it's, that instilled some confidence, but that also scared some people because Alex Orgy should have been starting from the beginning. Yeah. All off season, he was seen with teammates out at different events. It was clear that they were setting up for him to be the guy. Mm -hmm. Apparently he had a bad fall camp and they got scared. 
I think that just shows the youth of this coaching staff with Sharon Moore and Kirk Campbell and those guys. If you just stuck with them and tried to figure this out from the beginning through the first few games, you could have mm-hmm. got these a lot of these issues figured out. Right. Put them but, in a real game action against subpar opponents. Exactly. I mean, I know they had to play Texas early on, but still. Yeah, who who knows what ha- could have happened in the Texas game mm-hmm. if you had them comfortable, uh, al- at least a little more comfortable going into it. But pretty much game one was USC. It was a restart for the season. Mm-hmm. Nobody knew what to expect in terms of a passing game. And there pretty much not was no passing game. Yeah. 32 passing yards. Mm-hmm. Lowest for a D1 team in over 20 years. Yeah. Uh, funny stat is uh, when Michigan throws for under 100 yards, they're 6-0 since 2016, yeah. which is really funny. Mm-hmm. It just shows the way Michigan has played for so long. But they played the way Michigan – fans have been asking for honestly since the beginning of the season Mm -hmm. they ran the ball pretty much every time Alex Orgy threw it 12 times completed seven passes for 32 yards they kept it short for the most part Mm -hmm. I wasn't happy with the play calling when it came to them trying to like have him throw past the line of scrimmage because there were a lot of like two-man routes nothing easy Nobody really came open, but Alex Orgy also didn't make the Davis Warren mistakes where he would just throw it up to see what happened. Mm-hmm. He didn't do anything stupid, and that kept him in the game. But the main, the key to this game was, first of all, the defense. They looked alive, mm-hmm. really alive for the first time. Wink Martindale d- d- called less blitzes. He let the front seven just go out and do what they could do, and they showed up. Josiah Stort had a great game, had two sacks a bunch of pressures. Mason Graham and, K- and Kenneth Grant look the best they've looked so far this season. Yeah, Mason Graham was really impressive in that game yeah. from what I watched. Will Johnson was elite as usual. Mm-hmm. And Jair Hill finally had a good game. He didn't look great the first few games. Mm-hmm. He finally stepped up. Makari Page was terrible. I-, I don't know what was up with him. Yeah, he's been kind of a disappointment, I would say. Yeah, he He hasn't been great, but the, the rest of the defense made up for it. Mm-hmm. I was happy with them, even though in the second half, USC still came to life, but they're a good team. Yeah. The running game. Against a, an improved USC defense, they manhandled USC's front seven in the first half. They got a 14 to 3. Kalel Mullings had a big 50 yard run. Donovan Edwards had a 35 yard, 40 yard run. And they were just honestly cruising. In the first half. Now, USC made adjustments. Like I said, they came back in the second half. I kind of lost hope in the fourth quarter (laughs) because I felt like the play calling and Alex Orgy's inexperience, it seemed like it was too much to overcome. Yeah. And there was no way for them to come back. The momentum started sliding. Yeah, but the defense was able to get a stop when they needed it in the fourth quarter. Michigan got it back at their own 10, I believe. And they just stuck to their guns. Mm Mm-hmm. They, the uh, the O line stepped up when they needed to. They just kept pushing it. Alex Orgy completed a f- completed a few short passes to get them going, and then handed off to Kalel Mullings, ten yards before the fifty, and he just breaks out, breaks two guys' tackles, spins around, takes it sixty sixty five yards, mm-hmm. puts him in the red zone, and they run it a few more times, gets a fourth and goal. Old school football. They go I formation, run it to the left. The fullback makes a block, and Kalel Mullings gets it in. Mm-hmm. Game ends 27-24. That's a win they needed. Yeah. It's a really big win. There's still so much they need to do. The building up Alex Orgy's confidence as a passer mm-hmm. and building up what he's good at in the passing offense will grow as the season goes on. But it it was just good to see that type of win for a Michigan football team. Right. Uh, uh, That's the type of game they've lost a lot of times in the past. Mm -hmm. And without Jim Harbaugh, without a lot of the guys they had last year, they it was a gut check win. Yeah. They had to find a way to pull it out, and they did. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't pretty, but I'm I, I was happy to see them get it done. Yeah. And they got Minnesota coming up. 
this should be a game where Alex Orgy gains a little bit more confidence as a passer. Yeah. Obviously, they won't have him throw it like 20-something times, but Michigan is better talent-wise and like toughness-wise than Minnesota. Right. So it shouldn't be hard to mostly run the ball and be able to pull it out for them. Mm -hmm. And the defense will be able to snuff out Minnesota for the most part. Yeah. It won't be too difficult. So I want to see what Kirk Campbell can scheme up, how he can get receivers open, and just get Alex Orgy, get him in a rhythm. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it look like looks like besides screen passes, besides those short crossing routes. Yeah. I want to see him throw a few passes that gets them first downs. Throw up past five yards. Go flea flick or a play action. Get somebody open for a deep ball. I want to see what it looks like more than once throwing a deep ball for him. Mm-hmm. Just get him comfortable. Yeah, keep, you can still keep the counter between like 12 and 15 if you have to. Maybe a few over 15 passes, but yeah, just get him more comfortable. I know, everybody knows what to expect in this game. Yeah. Michigan's going to dominate in the, in the run game in the, and on defense. Uh, Yeah, just take the, the next step for Alex Orgy. Right. Yeah, and they get a couple games to do that. They got Minnesota this week, and then they have Washington the next week. Yeah, it's it's a night game at Washington, so it won't be easy. Yeah. But Washington lost to, lost to Washington State, so right. yeah, they're, they're not what they were last year. Yeah. And then kind of the, one of the big surprises of the year, after that they play Illinois. Uh, who just yeah. knocked off Nebraska They're in undefeated. overtime. Yeah, beat Nebraska on the road. Yeah. They're tough. Mm-hmm. They're a tough team. They can be taken advantage of in some ways. Yeah. Dylan Rayola still played well against them. Right. But they, they were just a tougher, more experienced team in the end. So, yeah, yeah that that Illinois game might be, will be a big one. Yeah. Not might. But Michigan has a favorable schedule until November when they play Oregon. But, again, that's a home game. Yeah. Um. So, they'll have a, a good home crowd for that one and then Ohio State at the end of the year. So they've gotten through half of their tough games, basically. Um, yeah, it, it's really up to what they what they are by the end of the season. Yeah. When they play Oregon, how far along will they be as a passing team? Mm-hmm. Can they at least be average? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. They, I believe it can happen, but they have to prove it. Yeah. But they're on. they're back on the right track, like you said. USC, that was a big win for them. Um, and now they kind of – not relax, but relax. <laughs> yeah, there's there's confidence now. Mm-hmm. They they can believe in the in the team. Yeah. All right. So the NFL week three. Um. After week two, Malik was up nineteen to fifteen over me in picks. Decent little lead. Nothing. Nothing crazy. Decent little lead, and that lead has been uh, squashed. Oh boy. Not entirely. But uh, I had 10 correct picks. You had seven this week. Okay. This is your, one of your All worst right. weeks in a while. Uh, so you're leading 26-25. So in one quick week, I made I, a comeback. I, I, like, I like when it's close. Yeah. It keeps things exciting. Right. Um, so some of my good picks that I had this past week, I picked Minnesota over Houston. You had Houston. Um, I picked Pittsburgh over the Chargers. I'm not sure why you picked the Chargers, but – I. I I, I mean, I guess you're not as much of a Steelers fan anymore. Yeah, it, it was just one of those picks where I was like, I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's just the Jim Harbaugh thing. And I and just liking how they played so far. I took Carolina as soon as I heard Dal- Andy Dalton was starting, oh um, and it worked out. The first quarterback of the season to throw for 300 yards and three touchdowns. The Red Rifle. What what is what has happened to the quarterbacks? Joey? I don't know, man. Andy Dalton Listen, does this though a lot. We like, watched gods, Joey. <laughs> We watch God. Andy Dalton will just kind of come in every once in a while, and he'll just look great. And then he goes back to regular Andy Listen, Dalton. He he was excited to get this chance, and yeah. it, it showed. Like even it, that happened like early on in his career with Cincinnati. Like you thought, man, Andy Dalton might turn the Bengals around, and then he turned into potato for a while. Yeah, they they be on the edge of the playoffs, always ten and six, mm-hmm. maybe eleven and five. Yeah, and then he wouldn't show up in the playoffs. Yeah, so Good I don't regular know. season quarterback though. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, let's see. Anything else crazy? No. But there was a lot of weird games, like the Rams yeah. beating the 49ers was weird. Yeah, that, that comeback. <laughs> Brock Purdy played great. Yeah. And Jawan Jennings had the game of his life. But the Rams just won the game. Yeah. Uh, Denver beating Tampa Bay, like, yeah. handily. Bo Nix. Bo Nix looked like he did in the preseason, good. where he just looked comfortable. He yeah. would run when he needed to. Like, it was solid. Um, Miami's in trouble. Big trouble. 
big. <laughs> big Listen, trouble. when Tim Boyle looks like your best quarterback, yeah, things have gotten better. Well, I don't know why they didn't have Tyler Huntley ready to go in that game because they signed him that week, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, f- I forgot about that. Um, I forgot sounds, they signed Tyler Huntley. I did too until <laughs> yeah. they were talking about it this week that he might be the starter. I was like, how did Tyler Huntley not beat out Tim Boyle? Yeah, they know. they might be okay with Tyler Huntley. Former Pro Bowler Tyler Huntley. But let's we're, <laughs> we're not doing this. Okay, <laughs> let's not. Uh, and the Giants beat the Cleveland Browns. Now the Browns are bad too, but the Giants looked competent. Yeah, in Listen, that game, that uh, Malik might save Daniel Jones, and we're not talking about me. Yeah. He might save his life. Yeah. Crazy. Um, And speaking of those Giants, to start out week four, they're on Thursday night against the Dallas Cowboys. Cowgirls. Um, I don't know if you know, but the last, like, four meetings or something between these two teams, the Cowboys have outscored the Giants, like, 80 to, like, 30, 40 something. Embarrassing. It's then they beat them like forty to three last year. Uh, I think it was forty to zero it, it was, to start it was, the season oh. last year or something like that. Um, but it's at home. It's at you know MetLife. Can I pick first? Go for it. G men baby. No way. Yes, I'm taking the Giants. I love how inconsistent <laughs> and just, just they just don't look very good yeah. so far. The Cowboys. And I don't think the Giants are that good either. Yeah. But their defense but, is actually pretty good. Yes. They got eight sacks last week. So I, I have no faith in the in the Cowboys run game. They need to play Deuce more. True. Uh Brand Aubrey's I, insane. Yeah. But he, he can't be your leading scorer. Yeah. I feel like Dak is Dak is just in this weird spot to me mm-hmm. where sometimes he's really good and other times it's just like eh. Yeah. Like, like who cares? Three quarters of the game against the Ravens, he looked pedestrian. The yeah. fourth quarter, he looked elite. I don't know how to explain that. Did the Ravens like yeah. let that, out the gas? The Ravens have a problem finishing games. That's yeah. that's another thing. And in the last couple of years, but, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, the Cowboys are probably the better team, but I just want the yeah. Giants to win this game. And seeing the Cowboys start one and three would make me so happy. So this would I'm be going with the Giants. This would be the game that I would I I hope that you win because I also want to see the Giants win. But I can't pass up an opportunity to not just take the easier pick. Okay. Uh, so I'll go with Dallas. Uh, New Orleans at Atlanta in NFC South matchup. This is the Saints. This is a weird matchup. Struggled last week against the Eagles after starting. They off looked really like strong. gods the first two weeks. Yeah, couldn't be stopped. Looked like the best team in the league. Um, and then the Falcons. They looked really bad week one. They've been turning it up slowly. Kirk won a primetime game. He did. Um, yeah. But and then they lost and bec- in controversial. Yeah. To say the least, fashion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kansas City and those refs. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they played well against Kansas City, which is good enough. So Atlanta may be getting on a roll. I don't know. Both these teams are kind of in, in limbo at the moment for me. This may be one of my first back to backs. Yeah. Can I pick first? Okay, go for it. I'm going with the Saints. All right. Because I was thinking Atlanta anyway. Yeah. I, I still I have a weird feeling with yeah. the Falcons. Like they're improved, but yeah. I, I don't know. It's uh, Yeah, they're not convincing. Yeah. That's for sure. They kind of grind it out and they've they've made some plays late in games to give themselves a chance. I'm just gonna go with the home field advantage, hopefully, and uh I'll go with Atlanta. The Rams at the Bears. Caleb Williams threw fifty two times last week. Um had a lot of padded stats basically. <laughs> they have the worst O line yeah. in sports. It's pretty bad. It is that that fourth and goal speed option, <laughs> yeah, losing like t- oh my god, oh. mm-hmm. that's America's like funniest home videos type stuff. Yeah, and then the Rams depleted as they are beat the Forty ers depleted as they are. That was an ugly game because like all the stars were out of that game. Yeah, um, and but you'd still yeah. think that the Forty ers had just a little bit more talent, and the Rams still found a way to win. I don't Matt know. Stafford has done it a lot. Yeah. Just pulling out games. So this game might be ugly. I'm going with the Rams. Okay. Yeah. Um. You know what? Let's keep it going. I'm going to go with Chicago. I'm going to go with the home team wow. again. Um, Caleb Williams outplays Matt Stafford. I don't know if that's going to happen. I just think what, that, what's the What's the scenario? I don't know. The Bears, Another Titan scenario? Uh, the Bears defense or something? Huh. I don't know. Stafford has one of those three-pick games? Maybe like Caleb Williams does just enough. I'm not. I'm not sure. 
Uh, this is one of my favorite games of the week. Actually. I like that you can't even like think of a scenario. It, it just seems it's, it's just like a, yeah. it's one of those games that's going to be ugly. Like I said, and I I think it's okay to pick opposite. Mm. Um, one of my favorite games of the week, though, Minnesota at Green Bay. Hopefully, Jordan Love is back for this game, so it's both teams kind of at full strength. Um, Minnesota has been the surprise of the year for me personally. Their defense has been incredible, and then Green Bay looked competent with Malik Willis. Willis, I thought. They were going to struggle a lot. He looked, he's looked really bad in his previous starts. So good, listen, good coaching does it's wonders. True. Yeah, it, in a good situation, he's got a lot more talent on his team than he did in Tennessee. Um, so that's a, that's a good point. But he just looks more comfortable out there. Um, they're getting him to run the ball a good amount, and they're utilizing him to his skill level. Um, I think is Sam Darnold playing. It sounds like he is. Okay. Um, I, I haven't heard anything like he's not going to play. It sounds like he's on track to play. And if not, like I don't know if that makes a big deal for me because Nick Mullins has been in the system. He knows Nick enough. Mullins versus Malik Willis. Oof. Everybody's excited for that Let's one. hope it's Sam Darnold versus Jordan Love. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure. I'm going to go Green Bay. I think this is the first real good defense that Minnesota's played. So this might be the time where Sam Darnold struggles just a little bit. I think he's playing well, but I think this is a different kind of test. So I'm going to go with Green Bay. I'll keep the home team theme going. I'm going to go Minnesota. Okay. I think Justin Jefferson just, he's too much. He could. He might. Yeah. Um, Pittsburgh at Indianapolis. I'm going Pittsburgh until I see Anthony Richardson get back on track. Same. He just does not Listen, look good. Another guy where coaching and a situation is helping him improve, Justin Fields. Yeah. yeah. He looked pretty good mm-hmm. in that last game. Yep. Uh, Denver at the Jets. Jets kind of got back on track last week. Aaron Rodgers looking pretty solid. But, like I said, Denver surprised a lot of people beating Tampa Bay. If this was in Denver, I think I'd take the Bo Nix train. Yeah. But I can't do it. No. I'm going with the Jets, yeah. Yeah, I think I have to go to the Jets, too. And that's just because of Brees Hall, I think, in the run game. And a little bit of the defense, I guess. But um, Got to mention Braylon Allen, too. They look like yeah, the, the perfect complement to each other. He looks so good. I wish he was on a team where he could be the lead back. Because he looks so good. Um, He's only 20 years old. I know. <laughs> yeah. He looks, and, and I mean, I've heard of this from a lot of people, he looks better than he did at Wisconsin. Are you sure? Uh, to me, I he mean, does. His, his his first year was like his best year as a yeah. starter at Wisconsin, mm-hmm. but he's he's been a beast. No, for I know, a while. I know he's been really good. What do you in, what do you mean by better exactly? <laughs> he just looks more like more explosive, or I don't like his jump cuts just look way better than I remember. Like, oh, okay, I guess maybe and maybe it's just my perception of watching him. Wisconsin football. Right, does uh, yeah, like they're kind of their running backs are a certain style of bruiser backs a lot, yeah. and he is a big big back that he can do that but he just seems like he's making like the right jump cuts he just looks more yeah. i guess explosive him laterally. and jonathan taylor back to back were kind of like yeah different it's just kind of crazy different um so i would i would wish he was on a team where he could be the lead back because it'd be cool to watch but yeah i i this is another game i hope denver wins but i'm gonna go with the jets uh philadelphia at tampa bay I have to go Tampa Bay just because it doesn't look like AJ Brown's going to play again. Devontae Smith is going to be in concussion protocol. We won't know till tomorrow if he's going to play, but I don't know. Jalen Hurst just is struggling right now. He needs to get back on track. I'm going to go with Philly. Okay. And it's because of what that defense did to the Saints. Mm-hmm. Jalen Carter. Yeah. He's been really he's, good. He's emerging. Yeah. And looking like the guy everybody thought he would be. And their secondary finally stepped up. They played a lot better. Yeah. And seeing what Denver did to Baker, mm-hmm. uh, Jalen Carter and those guys could really put some good. pressure on him. That's a good point. Yeah. Also, I, I forgot to mention with Denver, shouts out to Riley Moss, the white corners. <laughs> he was the highest graded corner of last week. I just had oh, to bring man. it up. I had to. Shouts out to Riley Moss. Anyway. Uh, Cincinnati at Carolina. Can the Red Rifle beat his former team the revenge game perhaps Cincinnati can't start on four they can't I, it, they Are can't sure? they can't Joey Are you sure <laughs> it's it's possible but I I, I, I no it's weird I, I gotta take Cincinnati it's almost weird that their defense is so bad 
It's yeah. But they have Trey Hendricks Hendrickson in the middle that's still getting they sacks. Almost, they should have beaten Kansas City. Yeah. And they got basically blown yeah. out by Washington. And like uh, each of their losses have been different. Yeah. Like New England was just like that seemed like something in a in a different galaxy. I don't even know what that game was. <laughs> yeah. Then they should have beaten Kansas City, they end up losing. Mm-hmm. Then Jaden Daniels it has the perfect rookie game against them yeah. like they they're, couldn't stop they, anything. They, they're going to win. They're going to win. I'm going with the red rifle. <laughs> You're trusting Andy Dalton just to, the momentum. Just to keep doing this, huh? Okay. I mean, they got gashed by the run game last week, and now Chuba Hubbard just had a good game. Andy Dalton's got Deontay Johnson. Uh, the only thing is uh, Adam Thielen got put on injured reserve, so we're going to get to see Xavier Leggett. Maybe that's... Listen, Zach, Zach Taylor has to make some adjustments. They, they can't start 0-4. He does, but... His job is on the line if they start 0 4. Uh, he'd probably be fired. Uh, I would think. Not this soon. I don't I don't think this soon. 0 and 4 teams have like a terrible percent chance of making the playoffs. Like, I, I, like it's almost impossible. I think a lot of bad luck has just t- hit them. Maybe. Maybe. I'm here for it though. Not that I hate the Bengals or anything. I just like seeing that kind of crazy stuff happen. Mm. Um Jacksonville at Houston. Who's who's confident in Jacksonville Jeez. right now? Who? Is Trevor Lawrence one of the biggest busts of all time? No. Okay. I, I still think he has a chance. I agree Joe. with you, but I still think he has a chance. But boy, it's looking bad right now. Yeah. Like he has a playoff win. Right. And they and he was pretty good last year. Yeah. And it's not that he's like a bust and that he's that bad. His hype. He's is not the problem. like Ryan Leaf or something like that, but he is. Yeah, he was seeing the, the, the Andrew Luck, John Elway level. Right, there was generational hype behind him yeah. of that he could be one of the greats, and he's just not showing it. Yeah, he's he's not even living up to luck yet. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm going with Houston, Washington at Arizona. This is another fun game. I think that is really fun. Um, yeah. we get to see Jaden Daniels, Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, some pretty potent offenses right now. Washington obviously being a big surprise. They're playing a lot better than we thought they would. Yeah. Um, even though I had a lot of confidence in Jaden Daniels, I still just thought the team around him would struggle a bit. They're starting to figure it out. If he keeps developing and they start taking more shots down the field, the league's got to watch out for Jaden Daniels. Um, and then Arizona, besides getting trounced by Detroit, they've looked pretty good overall. So, and well, Washington, they, they, they should have gotten trounced by Detroit. Yeah. But they, yeah, Technically didn't. The, Detroit let them stay in the yeah. game. Yeah. Um, and Washington's defense is still awful. So it could be back and forth, high scoring. Can I pick first? Go for it. I'm all in. I said he was a boomer bust. I said I, I, I couldn't trust his like play style mm-hmm. at LSU mm-hmm. and how skinny he was. Mm-hmm. I'm in. Join the club. I, I'm, I'm in. Ninety one percent completion rating. That yeah. last throw mm-hmm. with the pressure in his face. Yeah. Right in the corner of the You know, did come on. Ha, man. Have you seen the stat where um he's had two games where they've scored on every drive that they've had? Part of it is because they just hold the ball and they do slow, methodical drives. But he's had two games in his rookie year where they've scored on every drive. And there's, like, some number of, like, guys like Drew Brees and stuff only did that two times in their careers or something. Something to those crazy. Yeah, but I, I love he's he's already connecting the deep ball with Terry McLaurin. Yeah. He's building chemistry with uh, Luke McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. Him and Zach Ertz yeah. hit a few times. Brian Robinson's looks really now, good. Uh, Austin Eckler already looking hurt again. That's He was having such was a looking, good game, yeah. too. Yeah. He was looking good. So, But I, I'm, I'm in. Mm-hmm. I'm in on Jaden Daniels. Yeah. I'm going with Washington, Washington too. I, yeah. They're just a fun team. Jaden Daniels looks great. Whenever Washington is good, I just ha- I have to buy into something <laughs> because it's it's like a magical run whenever Washington is good now. Yeah. Um, New England at San Francisco. This is an ugly uh, one. Yeah. San Francisco still just play Drake May, man. <laughs> that's what I've been saying. Now you're on board. Just just, just play him. <laughs> like uh, I I really like seeing him at the end of the Jets game. Like. He drove them down the field. Uh, some productive passes. I have Ramondre Stevenson in my fantasy team. He got me negative points because he had like 24 yards and a fumble. Now that they've played a few games and they're playing hard, mm-hmm. 
They seem decently coached under Gerard Mayo. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. So you're taking New England? No. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. <laughs> All right. San Francisco it is. I'm just I'm just happy they're playing hard and yeah. playing decently well. Yeah. I'm going with San Francisco. Fran- San Francisco as well. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, Cleveland at Las Vegas. This is... Yuck. Listen, Yuck. <laughs> I think Las Vegas could still be okay. Mm-hmm. That last game was something else. I yeah, it's, it's hard to explain that one. Mm-hmm. Getting punched in the mouth like that against Carolina. Yeah, but the Browns, Deshaun Watson, it is like Space Jam where the talent <laughs> is, is just gone and sucked out of him. Like, <laughs> what? Do you, how do you, how do you explain? Yeah, what he was in Houston and what he is now. I don't know. Is it just like Browns bad luck? Maybe he's just. Too tense. He's not getting the massages uh, these days. Listen, you beat me to it. You beat me to it. Congratulations. You you win the podcast today. <laughs> not as relaxed. Because you, I was I was going to say it. Oh, gosh. It, it's I, I can't trust it. Both of I these can't. teams are on the verge of making a quarterback. Play Jameis. I agree. Just play Jameis. He'd be more fun. That's for I, sure. I, I will watch the excitement of Jameis versus Gartner Minshew. I'll yeah. watch it. Mm-hmm. Jameson but, would Jameis would love having Jerry Judy, Amari Cooper, David Njoku when he comes back. I, I think it'd be more as, fun. As long as Deshaun is in the game, uh, <laughs> you can have it. You can have it. And then Vegas, like I said, they might be going back to Aiden O'Connell. I don't know. Listen, Antonio Pierce said some guys were. <laughs> yeah, it's looking rough in there. Yeah. Um, which is funny test, because. You got to test the heart. So gotta Twitter started it. bringing back up the, the Max Crosby comments back like the end of last year where he's like, he was asked what would be another team you would want to play for if you did, and he said the Lions, which is obvious because it's more of a home team for him. Mm-hmm. But people are bringing it back up, so keep an eye on that. If the if Vegas keeps struggling, Lions go after Crosby them. and Hutch sounds like a hit cop show. Yeah, it does, and the greatest the buddy cop show of the modern era. Exactly, Crosby and Hutch. Um, and then I'm sure the other guy they were talking about is Devonte Adams because. He can't be happy. Listen, he he looked like he was just so mentally gone at the end of that game. The look on his face, he was oh, mm-hmm. tough. So who do you take in this game? The, the, we the have Raiders. to pick somebody. <laughs> the Raiders. All right. I thought I thought I thought you got that when I was saying well, I can't trust Cleveland. True. You never know. I'll go Vegas as well. Um, Kansas City at the Chargers. Kansas City. <sighs> Chargers mm-hmm. are in trouble again. Listen. It is. I think it's funny that Justin Herbert is basically becoming a Michigan quarterback. I, Chargers fans probably don't think it's funny. But well, I think it's funny. And now he as a person that watched it for years. And now he can't stay healthy. Um, Joey Bosa's hurt again. Joe Alt is has an MCL sprain or something. Um, J.K. Dobbins is still playing, which is the funny part. But he finally had a bad game last yeah. week. Derwin James got suspended. So people are already making jokes about Kansas City getting all the all the calls, but um, it doesn't it doesn't matter. The Chargers are a weird team. Um, Sunday night football is the Buffalo Bills at the Baltimore Ravens. Well, we we need to have a talk. We we need to have a talk. Josh Allen for MVP about seventeen. He's this Listen, is why he's one of my favorite players to watch. Who who knew that. Getting rid of a high level receiver would just make him see the field even better. Mm-hmm. Just oh, you're open dot, open guy dot. Is just yeah. Let's just spread it all over the field. Mm-hmm. Like that that last touchdown throw he had against the Jags, yeah. and he was rolling out left and threw it off balance mm-hmm. and put it right on the money, man. Yeah, and he's still running like, good. He he's he's liter- he's literally just playing out there, mm-hmm. just having the time of his life. Yeah, and Deion he- Coleman got his first touchdown. And he's got just enough weapons, too. Like, Khalil Shakir is a great, like, intermediate yeah. kind of slot guy. Dalton Kincaid, more of a wide receiver, tight end duo. Keon Coleman for the big plays. And then they have gadget guys like Curtis Samuel and Mac Hollins. So yeah. Even James Cook, yeah, he dropped a touchdown pass, but he he can't catch. You can yeah. put him out there, too. And he's been really good. Um, the one thing I'll say is Baltimore plays really good in these competitive games. Like, Lamar Jackson seems to step up when he plays – playoff caliber teams um so there's always a chance there um the bills are really good about um taking away big plays problem is the ravens don't really go for big plays too often um derrick henry just had 150 yards on the ground against dallas 
So I'm sure they're going to try to keep implementing that. This is in Baltimore, right? Yes. Damn. I'm, 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 I got to go Baltimore then. Really? Wherever, wherever this was, like, mm-hmm. at home, that's what I was taking. Okay. Even though the Raiders beat them at home, but yeah. I'm assuming they're going to get it together. Yeah. I'm going to take Buffalo then because I think this was a good enough 50-50 game. Um, I don't this, feel good about this one. This should, be, stick with it though. this should be a fun matchup either way. This is a great Sunday night football game. Yeah. Um, I'll go to the lame Monday night football game first. Tennessee at Miami. Yikes. Like I said, we don't know who the quarterback's going to be if at Miami the Miami starts Tyler Huntley, I'm going Miami. Okay. Um, but yeah. if it's Tim Boyle. You're stressing me out. Because I can leave a contingency. We did that last Tim, week. Yeah, we we need a contingency. Okay. Tim Boyle versus Will Levis is so disgusting. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> How do you trust the Mayo man? I don't know. He, like, How do you? <laughs> it, it, he's almost like Aiden Childs in a way where like, sometimes he just makes plays that look really good. It's even worse because he, and then, he keeps full out diving and just tossing the yeah. ball. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. That is bad. Yeah. When is he going to learn? And it's weird because, like, this is one of those teams that if you take out the quarterback and maybe you probably have to go back a couple of years, but if you told me a team had Tony Pollard, Calvin Ridley, and DeAndre Hopkins is, I would say the quarterback doesn't matter. Now, these guys are a little older now, yeah, and the quarterback does matter, so it's, you know, hearsay. But it's kind of crazy. Like, they have some offensive weapons. Tennessee's defense is really not too bad. I think I'm going to go Tennessee. I'm going to just go straight up Tennessee, whether it's Tyler Huntley or not. Oh, I got Miami. Okay. Do you want the contingency that if Tim Boyle plays, you go Tennessee? Yes. Okay. So I'll write you down as Miami, but I'll make a note. The Tim Boyle rule. <laughs> Let's just keep that for whatever team he plays on from now on. The Boyle rule. I can't believe he keeps getting... Jobs, it's insane, honest. isn't it? To be honest, it, it's insane. Yeah, look up his college stats if you never have. It'll it'll shock you even more that he somehow made the league. Yeah, um, and then finally the big matchup, the uh, the dark mode, Detroit Lions, at home against black. their bitter rival at this point, <laughs> the Seattle Seahawks, the bane of the Lions' existence. Yeah, uh, might I add. <sighs> this matchup always scares me, and I know it scares every Detroit fan. I'm going Detroit, hoping. The only thing that also scares me is they're doing the debut of their black and blue uniforms. What did we do last year at the Seattle game? Do you remember? When Seattle came to town, what did we do? Uh, they, Did they wear throwbacks? No. It's not the jerseys. Oh. What did they do? We put on the ski masks. I see. I I completely forgot about that. We tried something new. I see. I forget about the CJ GJ stuff. I that's kind of out of my mind at this point. <laughs> we tried something new. We had all the hype. That's not the same. Ski masks. With the- We're debuting a brand new uniform. The hype of a brand new uniform. Monday night football. What could go wrong against <laughs> Seattle? What could go wrong, Joey? I'm just saying. I have confidence in the team. The defense has looked way better. I yeah. love that about the defense. They've Terry and Arnold really is getting good. better. Yeah. He still gets those ticky-tacky flags, but mm-hmm. he did a good job on Marvin Harrison. And I feel like the refs have been watching him a little closer because there's some, yeah. like, he's definitely getting pass interferences, but seem some seem like they're not that bad. I don't know. That's just me from the outside. But And then Seattle, on the other hand, they're undefeated. They do look really good. I, I think they look good, but I, I don't think they look like – they don't look like a scary team. Yeah. They just look like a well-coached football team. Yeah. The, the nice thing is their offensive line is not the greatest at the moment. They're still uh, banged up a little bit, but they have a ton of weapons. Um, it, I'm not sure if Ken Walker is going to play in this game or not, um, so it's probably going to be Zach Charbonnet. Either way, I don't really care. The Lions just stopped running backs all the time. Um, the scary thing is DK Metcalf's looked really good so far this season, and Jackson Smith and Jigba has had some good games here and there. So, going with Detroit. Are Me you? Too. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be fun. I'm excited. Monday night's going to be wild. 
But it is scary that it's Seattle. I'll give them that. All righty. That's week four in the books. We'll see how we go. See if I can uh, retake the lead, perhaps. Um, next week, like I said, we'll we'll get more Tigers information. Try to do some more research. Um, and then Michigan doesn't really have a big game for a little bit. So, like you said, we can kind of see Alex Orgy's progress. Michigan State, salute to you at Ohio State. And um, then we're into bye weeks, which is crazy yeah. for the NFL. Um, season's rolling along quickly. But uh, for now, we'll see you guys next time.